So we will move forwards from building the application. And we will build everything from scratch. And we will start the project. So what are the tech stacks? What are the technologies we are using in the project? We will use Next.js, React.js framework, and use CF for CSS, we will use Tailwind CSS. And for the database, I am thinking of using Supabase. For backend, we are gonna using Next.js API routes. Use the create next app and we'll make the project code structure, initial product pro project structure. So let's just start. We will open the terminal. So we aim today to make. So I think everything is nice and clear as of now. Let's see. Stream health is good, I think. It's working nice. Why it is good? Hang. Okay. Looks like. The screen a little bit bigger, so I have to make it fix. Now it's looking good. Everything is good and perfect. So let's start. Let's move fast. So, for to initialize our project, we use npx create next step. And for to use the latest version of Next.js, we will use at the rate latest. And it will initialize our project. And it is using Yarn Package Manager to manage our pick, uh, to manage our NPM, or we can say dependencies inside package.json. So let me tweet it quickly because the view viewers are currently zero and I want few more users to watch. So it is installing all the project files, all the dependencies. So Next.js is a framework built on top of React. So it will install in React and all of the other things. And after it has installed, we will move forward by installing Tailwind CSS. Okay, so it is, it has installed successfully. So we will now, to open the Visual Studio code from here. Okay, so if you do change directory into e-commerce app and we will open the Visual Studio code by passing the command code, uh, code slash backspace and dot. So it will open the directory, current directory. Let me tweet it quickly. So we aim for 100 subscriber today. So let's complete the 100 su subscriber mark. So it will give me a boost to make more such a awesome video. So if you are watching this, then give this tweet a like so that more people can join our live. So we have successfully initialized our project of Next.js, boilerplate code. Now we will initialize the Tailwind CSS. So today in this stream, I will also teach you how to Google everything, how to make best use of Google. You don't have to remember any of the command or any of the code. You just have to learn how to Google properly. You just have to learn how to view the documentation and make use of documentation to make your application. So it is basic structure of Next.js app. It has pages, the public directory, the styles, all the node modules of uh, different dependencies, package.json, here, all the dependencies lies. So if we install any new dependency, it will show here. And it is the API route. It's like 
నెక్ ఇన్ ద నోట్ చేస్ అండ్ ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేస్ ద సేమ్ ఫంక్షనాలిటీస్ వీ కెన్ సి ద సేమ్ కోడ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ సిమిలర్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ రన్ ద కోడ్ సో టు రన్ ద కోడ్ ఇఫ్ యూ సి ఇన్ ద ప్యాకేజ్ డోట్ చేస్ అండ్ ఫైల్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ వీ ఆర్ యూజింగ్ npm so we we will run npm run dev but now we are using yarn so we'll use a yarn run dev because it will run our code on the local host 3000 which is a default port used by nextjs so now this our server is our application is running on local host 3000 if you click over it it will show us our application so i will make over a screen half and i will show here so our application is running so now we will initialize our telvin css files we will initialize telvin css how to make use of telvin css so we will google you don't have to remember the commands you just need to google how to use telvin css so tell telvin css inside next year so it will give us proper documentation so yes so it will say npx we have already initialized our products and we projects and we will install npm install dependencies telvin css for css and on auto prefixers these are these both dependencies are used for reducing your css files css code css extra code which is not being used in your application and then it will automatically create a telvin.config.js and we will make some changes to it so what it does is it it is a like basic such as, as like next.config.js it is kind of like that it is like a project setting we can say if we want to extend any theme if we want to install any extra plugin inside of replication we will use we will come here and uh, write down the code to install over any new plugin or to extend over themes and uh, it is something which telvin css by default gives us base components and utilities all the utilities classes all so we will copy this and we will move all the all the code into globals.css file and we will then use if 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 we will use telvin css then it will work nicely so let's install so as we have used yarn so we will not use npm install d we just use yarn so how to differentiate between yarn dot lock between yarn and npm so if you see here yarn dot lock file which means the project is initialized by yarn package manager but if you see here package log json file that means the project in the project is initialized by npm okay so to so here we are running our application in into this terminal so if you want to run any command we can't run over here so we have to uh, make the new terminal so to um, open the terminal in a new tab we can say we can click this plus button so if you click this plus button it will initialize a new terminal for us and we can now run our commands here yarn and to install any yarn dependency we don't use install we use add so yarn add and to install them as a uh what we say mm. these are the main dependency and these are the dev dependencies the dependencies which we only need into our dev environment so what is dev environment dev environment is something which we only depend on when we are developing our application so when we are developing our application we we may need something more we may need to configure our code we may need to pretty our code so all of these things all of these extra dependencies which we may not need in the 
production environment are installed in the dev dependencies. So to install dev dependencies, we use this slash d. And we will copy here this all three things. And so it will install all three, dep three dependencies inside dev dependencies, such like this. OK. So this is complete. And now we will initialize our tailwind.config.js. Yes, so it is installed. So I will move fast in the stream so that we are able to finish the whole web app today. Call the API route, we will use like API slash API slash hello. So you see here, it is returning the this thing, this JSON object. So the Tailwind CSS config is configured and we will copy this code inside. Simply copy, just copy the code. You don't need to do anything here. Just copy the code. So what it does, it goes into these directories and components and pages, and it will remove all the unused CSS. And only then our CSS file will reduce into very small piece of chunk, which is very helpful for SEO and very helpful for page load and many other helpful things because of this this now to install the tailwind tailwind basic all the utility classes we will remove the, all of this and we will copy this code so now tailwind is configured and we can safely remove this file we don't need also we don't need the whole default this thing now it will show us error because we have deleted one home module, okay? So we, what we will do, we will just close our server because we have modified some, some of the things. So we have to re-initialize our code. So remove all of this. And there is a command RAFCE in which by using it you can first install the or first in initialize the component code or component structure. So we call it home, okay, simply home. And we will now remove everything else. So it is good, it is good. And now it looks good, every home. So it is showing home here. And if you change the code, it will instantly render it. And it is very fast because Next.js recently moved from a different, f from, okay, so to into Rust, and Rust is very fast to like compilation and all the other things, so it is fine and great. So now we will move fast, okay. So let's make everything. So first we will, what we will do, we will, make over mock, mock UI, okay? So we are, we will not use any logic first, we will first build all the mockup of the website. What what I mean is, we, I will make whole the UI part of the website first. And then we will move to our backend and API and then all the other things. So first we will found, uh, so in the, a simple e-commerce web application, what you will see, you, you can log in, you will see all the product, pro products, you can add to cart, and then you can go and then purchase. So what we need is, we need, we need authentication functionality, we need an admin functionality. In the admin functionality, uh, the admin can add the new products and the, their price and their description, their title, all of the things. And the user comes, user will not able to see the admin or admin route, or we can say, user will not able to see anything about admin admin route or admin panel. And if the user comes, he can add the product into the cart and then check out. We will also implement the checkout using Stripe. Okay. And all of the things we will do inside our Next.js code. We will not use any separate backend. 
Okay, so uh, we will see how the Tailwind is working. So we can use the Tailwind utility classes such as text, LG means text large. Yes, it is working and font bold, which means font weight is 700, so it will make it bold, okay. So let's do it. Okay, I will not explain all of the things. I will only explain the critical part of the application because we have time constraint for because of because of that. Hmm. So let's build the website. Okay. So we want full 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 width. We want height full and flex. We need header. This is. This is main body and this is footer, okay? And we can use flex column inside the header. Now we can make it full width and we will give a specific height to header, such as height of, we can give it, uh, okay, this is too much. We can make three things in, into the header. All the products, okay, we don't need anything for that. We are building minimal e-commerce application. We are not impl implementing any bonus functionality or any advanced functionality. We are building a simple web application, a simple full stack e-commerce web application. So, sign up, login, admin. Okay, these are our buttons, so we can also make them look like a button. Okay, like this. We will make this uh, to look like, we will use simple colors like black and white, because we are no designer, we are coders. We more focus on the logic part, okay. So we are not uh, messing around here with the design part. We can also use some component libraries such as Daisy UI, Maintime, or there are many. I don't remember all of their names, but here we are just using Delvin CSS. It gives us a little bit of customization. So we don't have to depend on any other dependency for the whole lot of things, okay? So it gives us a ability or it gives us a superpower to customize every little tiny bit of thing. We give some padding, we give some, and we give the text, the color of white, okay? So it looks good and we will give the order radi radius is rounded and we can make it like this, py2. Yes, it looks good. And button looks good now. So what we will do? First of all, we will give, we don't want to give header any padding, but we will, we want to give this margin. So margin Y, MY means give the margin on the vertical axis, MY4. So margin is four. And MX, if we want to center it, MX auto and give some fix width to so it will center. But to make it look center, we have to give some width to it, like with some kind of. So to auto complete all of these things, what I'm pressing, I'm pressing control plus base space, control plus space, okay? So let's give it some, okay? So it is now centering not good, with full is correct. So the CSS is something which we play around, which we play around and until we oversight is, oversight looks good, okay. Yeah, so I think we have no users as of now. It default is flex row, we don't have to write flex row, okay. We will can give hover, and if we hover this, change the text to black, and change the background to white and give it some border of black after hover. So hover 
colon bg white what does it means it means if you hover change the background to white it is a great utility class of css okay see a background color after hovering so now see and border no it's cool it's pretty cool huh okay we are giving it bit full that's why they are going that side at almost right side of the web page so we will remove the w full we will make this thing center or we can also move this thing space around or at the end of right as as you wish you can do anything as it looks good we don't have any design so we are just building it okay so space justify around okay so now it it all it gives the same amount of width to every element every flex child children now it is good so we can copy and paste it three time or we can also fetch all the header elements in from the backend route and then map over all the elements and then show them but here for simplicity we are just building it not looks so great what we will do we will some specs space x 4 okay and m echo instead of giving it m x 2 kind of simple and make our website name like e-commerce web application simple a title or a h1 heading to give our website a name let's say e-commerce web app simple e-commerce web app with next years okay now you will notice it is going towards so to make it to the end of uh, at the left side what we will do we will give the margin at the right side auto margin right auto so you see it comes over the left side okay and we will make it nice by giving it some utility classes like text to excel font font light is good to center this among the y axis what we will use we will use item center so item centers center all the elements of the flex along the y direction if the flex direction is row and if the flex direction is column then vice versa code is too much and y2 is good was good and we can also give some background color to our header to bg gray color how about gray color why so it looks like looks good it not looks ugly we just want our app to not look ugly. we we can for also focus on responsive now of the web application but as of now we are just focusing on the big screen or the laptop or computer now we will build all the main main section okay so we can define our demo products here so for demo products we can use libraries such as faker faker or js which we, which will give us demo data to play around so it is a package we can install it yes you see here we are, we will install it as a dev dependencies because we don't want to use it on production so we can use faker to generate random emails sender random names random images okay you will see a lot of fake things address everything you can generate images and the types of images default provide an anis class image provider okay abstract you can also give height with height random randomize you can also customize images any much business data you are every okay so we have installed so we can use it to generate random data so we will make a 
simple C dot inside our root we will make a C dot js file C dot js inside we will import our faker we will initialize our product products and we will save into a what we can say we will save into a variable const fake product how many fake products do you want to generate so let's assume we want to generate 10 or 20 fake products so we will run a loop and generate we will run a loop 10 times and generate fake products and push them into our fake products array okay Simp simply i or we can also use for each or anything so let's use another thing so array dot from length of the array is 10 and we'll use for each okay and you see here the uh, so what is giving me the suggestions is it is called github copilot it gives us course code suggestions okay and we can press the tab to make it complete okay but like it is giving name price image description so it is kind of good okay yes and that's all every time we will see different different products or we can look to the console okay fake products what it has in the generator so we can run this what it was same to console.log is not support you can just export it how about export console.log is it, it will work so this is the we can say the pitfall or no pitfall is not a good word we can say it a it is a disadvantage of using github copilot like sometimes you have to debug the suggestion code which makes your time a little bit more than just writing on your own what we will use to the note seed to js because it is in our root file you will see a glitch here it is showing me some errors so errors are a part of programmers life you can't avoid errors so what is happening here we cannot use import statement outside a module so we are so if you if we use into in the pages so it will work. but here is also another problem inside the pages everything you write is considered as a route so to make things little bit more you have to move them into api and now i said you can say product judges products not just and you can return all of them if someone calls this you make a request to product again another error so yes so sometimes github copilot did some mistakes so you can see here what is the random it gives us some options what about a random to generate faker or data type or string to generate a unique id we can use this In instead of you you can use a string yes it gives us uuid uh, and no and we can check all of the other things as well because github copilot messes around and did all things wrong okay so don't use it next time try to rely on your own code instead of name dot first name and you can do anything so find name is good it will give you a full name you can even customize it and price or some there is something called so which let's say we want to build a sports if it gives us sports images and name of the product is all product or to product name we don't department or anything what is written inside the show of garden okay we want to show sports so what we will do to material 
what will be it will return us it returns the material of the project like rubber we don't want we want price so we can generate a random number instead of like data type dot number and we can generate number so here like we want the price to be uh, less than 100 so we can generate max 100 and minimum we can give it some options like this minimum is minimum price is 50 and maximum price is 100 and all of this in dollars and uh, it will give us a sports image generate a sports image it will give us a product name but product name is related to sports I we are not sure okay so what we can do here is in credible so close let it let it be we will figure it out let's generate as of now dot product description it will be much better product name sports and these things okay now it like this if you export this default handle function handler and then request and response object and then you can return so if we are not using arrow function we have to use the function keyboard here like this now let's see it, it works like yes it returns all of the product names and it will return every time different products it is not returning different different products because we have pushed all of the project into this and it will run it one time and it will return the same product every time because it we have saved the fake products okay and to pretty this we can install extension called make json pretty json prettier a, a reaction, it, it is an extension which you can use json prettier installing chrome json formatter yeah. you will see all the data is formatted okay we will use postman to further test out our apis but as of now we are just moving for it we are moving forward with it okay so all the products here id here name here price image description okay and uh, we also need a stock of the product so that we can tell if the pro product is out of stock or not okay so stock Fake. why it is not giving me Minimum we need uh, 10 stock and max we need 100, okay. Now it will give us faker dot random, okay, data type. Uh, stock, now the stock is, stock is 80, okay. Now stock is there, we can make it reduce and we can do everything with it. Now we are not using any database. We will soon implement a table and we will use Superbase to store data in our tables. We will use PostgreSQL, okay? So why not move forwards and let's make a Superbase account and use it? It is free, based. sign in with GitHub or, okay? Or we can make a new account, we start your project. I don't have a GitHub account here, so let's create. So I will, I will change the password. It's cool. Let's call it e-commerce. Make make it one fifty percent. So you can see okay, why it is it needed new project. Okay, we have to create a fail to create with unauthorized. Why why it needs? I'm trying Superbase for first time. Why it is suggesting me? It looks like there is a bug in Superb. We are using a password. I will change the password after some time okay and I will change the okay let's make I will change the password now without okay, now I have changed the password we can make our database region where we want let's all of the things let them as default and let's it will take some time 
let's move forward and build our website mock so we have our data as of now and we will render our data and show it here so if you if you want to use arrow function here what you have to do is just const handler is equal is equal to request response and then like this okay because it, it is not an async function and then you can export default handler and let's render to call the api route okay uh, we can use any third party library such as react query swr rtk query and there are a lot of libraries out there but here for simplicity we will just use use effect hook and inside the use effect hook we will call the api and then store all the result in the state and then we will render all the results here okay let's go so use effect is a hook which is used for running side effects in the app like if your website's component mount so f if it mounts and then any change in state you can re-render the use effect hook and it is very useful but it is quite difficult to use in big applications. That's why we use, for API fetching, we use any third party libraries such as React Query, RTK Query, or other. Okay, so let's go. And this return is used for, uh, like we are making, registering any event to listen for some events, then we have to remove all the events listener after our components unmount from our application or dashboard or we can say web app. It may, sometimes it may reflect in our memory efficiency or it may sometimes leak memory. That's why it is necessary to remove the event listener or set timeout or anything you are listening to okay or subscribing to you can unsubscribe here that's why we use this thing now let's call our api so now we don't need it we just want to run our use effect for the first time that's why we will use an empty so we will not HTTPS, only HTTP localhost 3000. And we can call any API route after that. Okay. So now, also we will use Axios. Axios is a great library which we can use to call our APIs. We can also use Fetch, but I prefer Axios. So let's first define a state of products, set products and an array, empty array. So it is a state. Let's import all the use effect, use, use state and use effect. And then we will call the library. So how we will call the library? Okay. So to call or uh, to call over API route, what we will do? We will just make a function get products. Okay. And it is a async function because we will use async await async, which we will get from x dot get. And we will we can call the API route here. API like this but we have also api so api slash routes and we will console dot log the data what we are receiving data dot data and we'll see what it does let's see okay we will to call this this function like this see we are getting all our products here now we will render out everything and it will show nicely price stock and if now we will set the product. Now we have pro our products, and we can see them. See here, we can we can see all our products products here. But we have to uh, make them 
beautiful. So the user don't see JSON data all over here. Okay. Uh, let let's take a cube check, and I will come again, and we will continue. Break is complete. Let's move forward. Okay. So where we are? We have we have to render all our products here. Okay. So we can we will move everything outside of the index.js or home component. We will make every every con com different component out of it, and we will make our organization a little bit more readable and a lot more better than as of now. First of all, we will build everything, and then we will separate out all the components. Okay. So to render products, we will, what we will do? We will first check if the products are here. Okay, products and products dot length is greater than zero. Why we are doing this? Because it is necessary. If you don't do this, then there is a chance that your app code crashed because of undefined error in the JavaScript. Then we will make all our components. So inside the main, let's make a section. Inside, inside all those sections, render our components and give it some padding and margin. So let's give margin of four and padding of four and give flex. Flex, uh, flex row is default and flex wrap so that more than one component can come on the next row. Okay, and then you and what we will do, okay, here we have to map our elements. Yes, yes, we can also do it here or there, doesn't matter. So we have, if we don't have a ID, then we will use index as a key, but as of now, we have ID. You can see we have generated a unique ID that's why we will use ID as a key, unique ID as a key. Because why we use ID? Because React differentiates all the products which we will list from their keys. React doesn't know if we don't specify the key, it will re-render all of the components again and again. So it will affect our performance of the app. Okay, that's why we have to use a key. Otherwise, it will give us a warning, and it, it will hamper our performance of the application. Product.id. Now it is not giving us auto completion because we haven't used TypeScript. If you have used TypeScript, then it will know that product has ID and name and all the, the other things. Okay, that's why it is very necessary, or it is very best practice to use image. Or, or to use the TypeScript inside the production ready application. As of now, we are building just for fun, then it's not needed. We can just build it around and play it around. Okay, so we have given this, and then let's just render the product dot name as of now, or product dot price. Yes, product dot name is efficient. So we'll see here, yeah, like this, and. Let's give some classes here. Oh, padding of four. Just give some border. Border black is good. Okay, it's good. Give some margin. We can give here space. Instead of giving every element, we can give here a space x four. So this property gives every element I instead. Uh, uh, instead of first element, it gives every element the margin right of four, four REM. Like you see here, okay? So I'll, and we can also specify the space and what we need to do, we can give it a specific height or not. Just let it be here. Or we can also make it grid so that it looks nicer. So if you use grid, let's do this. 
it is much easier. So great. We want to make three columns. One, two, three for the products. Okay, three columns and then space. If we are using grid, we will use space or gap. We can also use gap property. Gap six, so it will give us like beautiful. This looks beautiful and we can also play it around. So it looks good, okay. And to make our app responsive, we can pass down some things such as after the large, large screen, make uh, columns for grid calls for. So if the large screen occurs, it, the columns are four. If the small screen occurs, the columns are three. So this is a huge use of grid and grid columns. Tailwinds, Tailwind CSS makes this very easier for us. Okay. So now the products are listed. Now we will render the image. For image, we have image component inside the inside Next.js. So let me show you the documentation for the image. So it is a very best thing in the Next.js. We can use it. So it has already some advantages over or plain image tag such as optimization it optimizes over app it uh, lazy load over apps okay so it's it's very best to use let's make s3 to product product name and we want image product description so what we are returning here so let's console.log so we can see what is the little bit big so we can we can truncate it okay so there is a class in Tailwind CSS which get truncated it automatically automatically I don't I'm not remembering at the time truncate it, it is truncate or something truncate okay yes it's, it's truncate so what it, it does is it uh, if the text is greater than it's overflowing or it's greater than its width, then it will make the dot 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 file over here. Okay, dot 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 text here. So it so that it comes inside the component or inside the given width. Okay. Now let's go. And we will give product name a little bit bigger height or bigger font weight or a greater size font lg or font excel is good font excel not text excel font uh, semi bold is okay i think yes and let's make this a flex and give some margin around y-axis of two, two is good. And make this flex column. And if we hover over it, we can give it some effects like hover after hovering, a scale 105. Also we can make after hover border two. Okay, and if we have to give transition and transform property, if we are using a scale over instead of making border, we can just say it's nice, no? We are just playing around with Tailwind CSS. Isn't Tailwind CSS beautiful? Please comment. What are you? Your thoughts on Tailwind. Now we will render the image component over here. Okay. So let's make a div. Let's give it some aspect ratio of aspect. Aspect of square aspect of video. Aspect of video. So that if we upload any image of our product, then we will upload it to. 9 is to 16 ratio, 16 into 9 ratio, so that it remains constant all over of over app. Okay. 
aspect video like this okay now we will render a product queue product node name width and height we are not giving it we will give layout equal to fill and we will give object cover object cover is object fit is cover okay and we will give this a relative property if we will not give it relative then it will cover all the width of the container and it will stretch the image and things will get matched it it, it is always advised to use relative property if we use cover in the image tag okay remember this thing see this up now it will say host name is not configured under images in your nesh.config.js so what we can do it is a warning so we if we are using image component then we have to specify from which domain we are using the image or which host name we are using the images so inside the nesh.config.js what we will do you just click on this and follow the instruction as given in the here okay so module that exports next config and images domain dot and specify every domain separated by commas which you will use for the images so here we are using lorenflicker.com so here we will specify lorenflicker.com so it will render our images and we now have modified the next config.js file that's why what we will do we will re-render our server okay see it gives us a notif notification they found a change in net next dot config dot says restart the server to see the changes so now we will restart now if we'll refresh this all of those components are shown here yeah see but here is a problem all of the components are showing the same image okay we don't want to show the same image here okay and also we don't want we want to look all of them what we can if we refresh every time it will render different different because we are using faker and it generates again and again different different components different different text or different different images so what we can do here is mm, instead of the title is getting a little bit of off so we can also use a truncate text now it is all sh showing what we can say it is all looking constantly is as good as same okay they are not looking now what we will do is let's it changes the opacity okay it changes off now this all of all the products they are not looking like products okay so what we will do is we will change the product route they should look like products okay we can at least we can do that we, at least we can do that so instead of doing this commerce dot product we can see the faker js the want the images of sports okay faker do no let's change the product we want the image of other thing take out about they all are same images what is happening here so let's give it some within it and randomize this method is replicated okay so let's not worry about it we have just assume that they are all they are our products and we want to purchase them so what we will do after going on a e-commerce website we will click on a buy now button or we will click on a to cart button two different functionalities we can do okay so we will also add the two buttons here okay so uh, so same we can use the same button over here also same button 
इमेज इट्स अ डिवीजन प्रोडक्ट प्रोडक्ट नेम प्रोडक्ट डिस्क्रिप्शन प्रोडक्ट इमेज एंड वी विल यूज अ डिवीजन एंड टू बटन्स बाय नाउ एट टू कार्ट टू थिंग्स यूजर कैन डू आफ्टर गोइंग ऑन कोड एंड वी कैन स्पेस एक्स टू बाय नाउ एट टू कार्ट बाय नाउ एट टू कार्ट वी कैन ऑल्सो वी आर बिल्डिंग ए मिनिमल वेबसाइट सो वी वी आर नॉट कंसिडरिंग टू एड एनी आईकॉन्स और एनी फैंसी स्टॉफ वी विल जस्ट बिल्ड फंक्शनलिटीज सो दैट वी कैन बाय प्रोडक्ट सिंपल लेस पे नाउ वी हैव टू इम्प्लीमेंट द फंक्शनलिटीज ओके वी आर नॉट इम्प्लीमेंटिंग द फोटर यू कैन इम्प्लीमेंट दैट एट एज एक्सरसाइज टेक इट एज एक्सरसाइज it is very simple to implement a photo we are not implementing that here we will use we will implement authentication we will make the products and we will implement the payment we will implement the payment okay how to how to user how the user will get the payment and after that we will build the admin panel we will think of all all about that after let's build the admin panel first okay you see here the buttons are Okay, let's forget about responsiveness here. Okay, let's do fix if space x two. And after LG, now if, if you see, okay, W full. If we can also give here W full, so that's the end. After the large screen, we will remove the horizontal margin to zero. and vertical margin space y to so are we doing correct or matched up it's working good and now we can remove that if we remove that only remove the horizontal direction pad uh, horizontal direction padding not the vertical direction padding okay py2 so py1 is acceptable i think point so now let's build the admin panel we have products we have header and we have everything now let's anything okay the price we forgot to mention the price so let's put the price inside product product of price is here we will also implement model kind of functionality if the user clicks on the image or on the title or on the description a model will open and show all the details of the product okay that will be a good user experience we have to think about user experience sometimes because it's the user who is going to use the websites not the okay so it like not not we are using we can we can even read json objects but a user doesn't so we have to think about here yeah, some things are a little bit good what is happening here um, x direction is space x2 so we have to remove the space x0 so space x0 good okay so is there any problem after lg give it let's so in the tailwind chaser always remember the this thing think about responsiveness from a smaller screen to bigger screen not from bigger to smaller because the utility utility classes inside telwin are implemented like this so after lg screen you will give space x2 okay so space x2 which we we know we don't need it we need it yeah we need it flex and we have now we have to give it height full or something so that it not looks bad on the bigger screen yeah and we have to take care of the white y spacing also so space y after lg remove the space 
see now it will look good yes it will look constant changes and look so now we will implement the admin page so next yes has a functionality of file system routing which means if we make files inside our pages directory it will automatically consider them as a new route like let me show you live example so we want to show an admin panel okay so inside the pages directory we will what we will do we will make a new file we will make them admin dot js and then we, we will make it as a component like admin component or admin page it's much more accurate word so this is our admin page okay so let me show you what are what are the extension i am using to auto complete it all i am using all these extension so uh, the most important extension uh, let me show you so the main extension which i am using it is react redux react redux react native snippets okay this is the first extension extension you have to install it is recommended and it makes your life much more easier in generating the boilerplate of components after that i am using prettier this is this is code formatter it will it will automatically format your code after saving and after this we can have yes these two are the most important extension i will say and uh, as you go you will find a lot of extension you can install okay and also for tailwind css you can install the tailwind it's its own extension tailwind has its, its own intellisci it intellisense extension it will suggest you its classes like i was doing like this so let me give you a quick, quick tip if you want to let's see if you want to writing bg and you are not seeing any auto completion so what you will do just press control plus space it will show you all the recommendation here you can use here you you can use them okay so let's remove this and let's see how it's working or not and to go to that route we don't have to implement any routing file or any routing feature just we can use the use router hook and it gives us a router see this you can use the use router hook it gives as a functionality to use router and it the router gives us many things like your repair arms and many things you will see by practicing and building the projects and let's after clicking the admin button it should go to on click okay so we will register it on click and it's take a function or we can pause the inline function as this like this and arrow function and router dot we are see this we are taking router from okay we have not import the use router hook from next year so we will import so it will give us it will give us auto completion like router dot these all are the functionalities are given by already implemented so if we want to go to admin route we can also use a link tag provided by next year or we can use the router so here we are using the router push dot slash admin so it will take us to the admin page okay you, you can also use link tag in the next you can use the link tag like this or you can use the router as i shown you here both are both can work so if now we click on admin it will take it will take us to the admin so we want our header on every page of our next js application for that we can make a separate component which we name a layout and we can pass it children's and it will render the children's as it on let me show you what i am saying so let's make a directory src 
inside we all be inside all of the pages and components are there let's move the pages directory inside the src directory move to move into this and our application will crash don't worry about it and let's make another folder into its components okay and we also have to modify one file here and let's also move the styles file here in, into the src A everything we write or everything we have to do with code okay we will move that into the src folder now what we will do we will modify the node next next code telvin config because we have used dot page dot slash pages now it is not dot slash pages it is dot slash src slash dot slash src slash okay now it will work now what we have to do we have to reinitialize our server Re rerun or see all the images rendered because the telvin css now not is not working now why is that let's have a look why is the telvin css not working dot slash src slow slash pages okay and dot slash src instead of dot slash we can just do sr because we have to define the route or we have to define the path of the src folder okay so if we copy the relative part and see here it's only sr telvin config says any other file I, I, we are missing thing errors are the part of our life we have to figure it out why is not working dot slash is def default and dot slash src which means inside this src and then inside this page yeah it should work everything is correct then what is happening okay okay let's create this thing create this thing to open the terminal what you press control plus tilde the button below the escape button okay okay why this is because there is this next folder dot next folder and what it does is it already created some of the components some of the code and it set up the all of the paths so we have to delete, delete this thing because it has all our static and server files all of our things cache so we have to delete delete all of this because it has done all of the things with the default routes which we ha previously have but as of now we moved everything into src folder so we have to delete this folder so that next can build re-render re and next can build everything from newly built path as we have suggested okay so we have to delete this dot next folder now what we will do is now we will run and pin them there it will work see see working so that's the case here so you have to be a little more bit a little bit of patience because patience is the key in the development world if you don't have patience if you don't have if you don't able to resolve and bug or any issue in 5 hours on 10 hours and 15 hours then don't worry just relax a bit or just uh, ignore it for a while or just think about something else and then come back you will definitely able to solve it okay so this is everything is now working and if we go to admin panel now admin is showing what I'm saying is I'm building an admin a layout page. Okay, so to build a layout page, we can make a comp folder inside the component directory and then the layout, and then inside it, we can define index.js, and we can also make a separate for product. 
product and inside it we will initialize our product or we can capitalize it always remember to use uppercase first letter uppercase for a, a for any comp component if you not use uh, the case sensitive if you not use a default in conventions then your app will not render okay so this is the main thing to remember now product and index dot js we will build out build it out single product it is a component for single product it is a layout it accepts children okay so it is a layout component it accepts single children so always give this prop name children because if you if you will not give the children as prop name react will understand it as a simple prop okay so that will make things a little bit of different difficult for you which cannot be rendered inside it okay so what i'm saying is this is a we can just move it into the layout section okay header we want header on every page so we will move header here and we are using router here so we will just initialize the router here with the use router hook like this and we will give this because we want it as a, and it will render the children here like this okay so children are the react nodes which we will render and we can pass inside two tags and it will it will render them so now we want to render the main component here and remove this thing we can use layout layout so the layout is imported here and we we can pass now any children here and it will go to rend it will go to render it here okay i hope you have understood if you have not please comment it out i will make another video how layout things are working and everything so now for the admin pane we also want here the layout now see the header appears here we can go back it appears here all the products okay let's go admin it appears here okay so this is the thing and for the product we are we want this is a product this is the component of product okay so we'll take it and we will copy paste it here and we will import the image component this is generally how i build web apps okay you are seeing live workflow of building production ready web production ready web, web application okay so remember every time product and key what does the three dot does is they like let me tell you let me quickly explain you if you pass the product whole as a props you don't need to pass like product dot id is equal is equal to product dot id product dot name is equal to product dot name you can directly do this do like this okay and here the product and you will receive everything you don't need to do anything here okay so now if you go to back you will see something here all the props are passed as a product and we can use the props here like this see hmm. so now looks now look our main component our home component looks very clean this that's your admin page is something which we will need to manage our products okay how many products are there uh, is product is in stock and how many 
orders are been placed, have been placed, and everything you have to see in the admin panel. So we will not make this app complicated. We will simply add the functionality to add a product and reinitialize the stock of any product, edit any product, and all the simple functionalities we will do. So here you will see we can edit some comments like to do to the product delete you can also delete a product okay that's also a functionality and also you can edit a product add a category we are not going into the category and all the things we will just make a minimal e-commerce web to comment you have to press command plus backslash and if you are on windows you have to press control plus slash to comment out any code, any line of code, or to comment out the whole, more than one line, no, you have to select the code you want to comment and then press command plus, con command plus backspace or control plus backspace. Again, to uncomment or comment, okay. So we'll see all of the things and now as of today, let's make database tables for products, users, and make a relation, and all of the cool things. Then, in the future, tom tomorrow or day after tomorrow, we will implement more functionalities. Okay, so let's do this. Implement some tables, and we are using Supabase. Okay, so, and we will also implement authentication database and all of the things okay so here are our keys you can see all of the demo repos and you you will get to know about how to use superbase okay i haven't used till now i this is my first project with superbase it's a very cool startup can see all of them you can see all the code here like this they have their own library which you can use to fetch the to do's and all of the cool things you can do add to do fetch to do's delete to do's so instead of to do's we will face we will face the products we will delete the products we will edit the products okay and if you see the library how the things are implemented so import create client and it is m much it is much useful and it's very great and it, it makes our life easier in fetching the api fetching the data okay from the database and for security we can implement row level security as suggested here as you can see as here, super base details, progress, postgres row level security. You can implement securities like this, create policy, individual can create post, check auth.uid is equal to user ID. So you can implement all of these things. And you can see the code and understand what the code is trying to say and implement on your own also, okay? So let's, first of all, let's uh, make the database table we want, okay? or instead we let's try out first hmm. configuration you closed okay gwt expiry let's uh, do not make any changes to the default default code let it be email out double confirm email changes email confirm changes email custom if you have custom smtp then you can also use them this is also very cool you can enable phone auth you can enable external auth provider like apple github google google auth okay we will just as of now we will just use email or we will we can also use google okay 
we can see logs here we can see sms we can customize everything confirm the whole of this link yes it's pretty cool invite a user nice so we can see the documentation of how to implement the authentication okay we have a storage when where we can add the uh, product images okay create a new bucket create bucket to store and server in type of digital content make your bucket private and public depending on your security preference okay, let's create this it's a public bucket product images where every can everyone can use instead of giving it name product images give it product and we will create the images folder inside of it okay it's very cool you don't have to worry much about anything you can you can also upload table um, now we will implement our tables okay create a new table so what are the tables tables are uh, we use table to store the data okay so first first table is our user table then we have product table then we have orders orders table how many orders are there then we will have yes as of now we have th three or three tables or we can have cart 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 table okay we have cart table so these four tables we will need user can have multiple orders okay user can have multiple orders user can only have one cart at a time and if the cart if the cart is filled as of now then user have to remove the card and again the fill out the card okay so user can have only one card and one card can be only used by one user and one user can have many products and user will have two security roles one is admin and another one is simple a uh, general users so we will make the table now so let's user table description enable row row level security yes we can enable row levels restrict to by enable writing postcards enable real time broadcast changes on this table to authorize subscriber we don't need to enable real time okay so id is already created it is already so we need that and username we can use username so we will call it as text or where care anything and it is is it allowed to be null or not we can mm, allow it is null or fine we don't need username uh, we can just name or first name of user just call it name we can also implement compo composite primary keys but as of now we are just setting and is nullable is 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 it can be nullable the name can be nullable yes we don't need name of user we just need their email address to contact we need name email that's all we name we need password password of user we will not save the exact password provided by user in the database we will hash the password then we will save the password okay remember this thing for security we will always hash the password then say we'll save it and we will, if we need to verify then we will use the hash function to verify with the user input password and the stored password in our database and then match if it is correct then we will uh, give them access to our website and login successful and other otherwise we will tell them that your username or password is wrong this is a standard process in web development and it is also work here it cannot be null email email cannot be null in the setting we can is null but is not nullable is unique yes yes okay so it is not nullable and it is unique password can also be it's not it's not necessary we do it as unique because many users can have same password okay but we can make this is not null if the password value is not provided the database is not will not able to save the password into the db okay. 
your name, email, password. As of now, we, we will save them and further after implementing the table, we will implement the relations in between the tables, okay? So, save as of now. As of now, we, I am not enabling the row level security. We will, I will make further videos and will make more videos about Supabase and how to implement row level security in, uh, and how to work. So now we have user table. Now we will make another table, which is products. Product, product has also created it. Product, we can also implement updated it, but I think we don't need updated it for the product. We just need stock. Okay, we forget to add the role of the user. We can make role admin or a non-admin user. Okay, we will do it after it. Stock is a number. So two byte integer, four byte integer, float. So what we will select for the int four, we can use int four or int two. Two byte integer is enough, or we can use int four. Stroke is not. Stroke is nullable. All is nullable. Stroke is not nullable. Stroke must be inside it. What we need or after? Everything we have done over here. See where description can be null. Okay. Description can be null. Name of the product. Product name. It it cannot be null. Product name cannot be null. Description may be null or not. Now we will add image. After storing the image inside the storage bucket, we will get the URL and save it as a string inside the image. It can also be null. The things which cannot be null is stroke name, price of the stroke. Price of the, it can't be null created a stock, how many stock of description name, image, price. Okay. Any other thing we need, we can add another column. Okay, um, now we now we will need to make a relationship of this table with user table. So users, user can have many orders. User is not bind to have only one order, okay? User can have many many orders, so we will make a relationship. Select so reference. It can have only a user can have many orders, but one order can have only one user. Okay, so it is a one-to-many relationship between user to product. Okay, so here we will give it can't be null. Okay, user ID must be present for an order. If not user ID, who is purchasing the order? That it is thing we have to we have to think. Okay, it gives all of. I'm using the super base first time, but it's it's very nice. Okay, now user ID. And let's go to users and modify the row. Okay, how to modify? Edit table. Edit column. Users can. Okay. So that was the product table, not orders table. We have made a mistake. So a product is independent. A product is not dependent on any. any. A product is an independent thing. It is not dependent on any. But a order can have many. Also, a card user ID. It is in its implement another order ID. Order created it. Okay. And what are the other things we can add in orders? So order have products. Can order can have many products. One thing we can do is order can have many products. Now here we can do this kind of thing or we can implement another another table in which we can define the relationship like one column is product can have multiple orders and orders and product and orders can have multiple products. So products and orders have many to many relationships. So we will implement a new row, new table inside. One column is product ID and another one is order ID. 
so we can query them quickly without getting much worried. Okay. So as of now, product. This is a this which this is which table. But order one order can have only one user. But a user can have multiple orders. So here we will define the simple and order ID user ID. That's that's all. We don't en need anything in the order. But we can say uh, the order is. We will figure it out. What are the things we need, or we will see a real life example of a full stack or we can say easily a life example of e-commerce server application then we will see how the things are working in the in the in that application then we will make the necessary changes in our tables okay so as of now ordered product user and one thing is cart we can make cart cart or we can not make cart cart why it is the need of cart yes we can save the cart in the db because we need to save the cart, okay? If the user get refresh the page, the state is gone, then he he or they will, they have to add the products again, okay? So if we have something like Redis database, we can also use that for cart functionality, but we don't need to make our app more com more complicated. So let's make another one called cart table. And it has what ha does a cart has. A user has only cart, and the cart has only one cart. Okay, so it relates between it has. We can use and a cart. What does a cart have? A cart has pr products. Product has products. A product we can implement as an array. Okay. And a cart is it's nullable. A products is nullable. Products. It will store all the ID card product for NP. Okay. Fail to run SQL. For NP constant card products app key cannot be implemented. See, I think I we have made some mistakes. We have to remove let's make make this and we will figure it. Card order product in user. Now we implemented basic tables and we will figure out what relationship each of one have from other one. Okay. We will see. So that's all for this video. If you found this video helpful and if you learned any any little thing in the video, then please give some suggestions and check check out clubofwaters.com. I'm going to host a workshop in which I will implement an Instagram clone with this time Firebase. Okay, so this may be come out on YouTube. I'm not sure, but this is going to be a li live workshop in which I will implement the Instagram clone by using Firebase. And Firebase has database Firestore, which is a NoSQL database. Currently, we are using SQL database to implement the e-commerce web application. In the SQL database, you have to understand the relationships and all the tough things we can say them. You, one time you understand, then it will be very easy for you to figure it out how things work. Okay, so I am no, I am not going to tell you everything as of now. We will continue this video. We will continue to build this application until next time see you